Holy Week. In Armenian, we call it Avak Shapat, which literally means the Great Week. And it really is a great week. As I think about Holy Week, I always am excited. This goes back to my childhood. I was, I was a young teenager, and uh, those are the years when I, I really uh, began to feel uh, the presence of God. And a lot of this came from my experience of assisting and participating in the services of Holy Week. I remember being deeply touched by these services. This was at a time when I knew not one word of Armenian. <laughs> As it speaks to the power of these services, the inherent power of the music and of the ritual um, of the scripture to be able to speak to us uh, in a very, very deep way. Think of Holy Thursday as really when the week becomes very intense, liturgically speaking. Of course, Badarak in the morning on Thursday, and then the, 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 the sublime washing of the feet ceremony. The ceremony which, which, which really needs no words to convey the force and the centrality of that fundamental Christian message of service. Of course, after the washing of the feet, we have the, the great vigil we call Chavarum. It's a wonderful name in Armenian. Chavarum just means darkness. And that darkness refers, of course, to the Bible passage, Jesus in the garden. And uh, despite his, 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 his wish, his entreaty, that his closest friends, his disciples, would stay with him and just wait for him during these last hours of his life when he too must have felt some kind of human fear at some level. Um, and he begged his disciples to just wait for him while he prayed. And yet, uh, not only did they they fall asleep one after the other, but one after the other they betrayed him. All of this is portrayed for us um, by this ritual where we light the 12 candles in front of the church and then one by one we, we extinguish those candles until the only one remaining is the candle of Christ. The church is immersed in, in pure darkness. The church calls on us to keep vigil, to wait with the Lord for this service that traditionally would last all night long until sunrise. Friday is a, is a quiet day. Um, we have this marvelous uh, crucifixion service, uh, which is really an ancient Bible study, a series of a few dozen Bible readings from the prophets and the New Testament. We conclude that ceremony with this marvelous ceremony of the veneration of the Holy Cross. We simply uh, sing this ancient hymn, Chachi Ko Christos Yegir Bakanemk. We bow down to your holy cross, O Christ. In the evening on Holy Friday, we have the burial service. We have a, a, a mock casket that we set up and adorn with flowers and incense. We lament the burial of our Lord, but that lament is tempered because we look ahead. We know that it's only temporary, as our own deaths. Uh, for those of us that believe are also only temporary, uh, only a turning of the page uh, into a life with God which doesn't end. Saturday morning is quiet. We celebrate the vigil service with all of the readings beginning with Genesis chapter 1 and continuing through the prophet Daniel and the marvelous story of the three youths in the fiery furnace. This leads us into the first announcement of the resurrection, Christos Hariavi Merelots, Christ is risen from the dead with a great and magnificent celebration of the Divine Liturgy on Saturday evening. And of course, that leads into a second celebration of Easter on Sunday morning. It's a marvelous journey uh, which can touch all of us if we open our hearts and allow ourselves to follow along this path with Christ, this path which the church has given to us. We 
need not understand every word of the of of this of the prayers. We need not understand all the the sublime lyrics of of the innumerable hymns that we sing. Just the the services themselves, the unfolding of these events in the church services themselves are enormously meaningful and can touch us very, very deeply.